Amen. Amen. He is here. He is in his sanctuary. Amen. It's such a wonderful experience for God's people to come and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And we want to welcome everyone here today. And uh, there is a gentleman that has traveled far. And he has been with us here for, I would say, about a year, almost a year. And his name is William Martin. Where is William Martin? Where is William Martin? Can you stand, please, sir? William Martin. Now, he's a distinguished gentleman. Amen? Amen. Amen. And uh, we just want to, I know that this week uh, you're going to be celebrating a birthday on Wednesday. <laughs> I won't ask you how old you are, <laughs> but we just want to say happy birthday to you. Amen? Amen. You want to tell me how old? <laughs> oh, you're proud of it. <laughs> Eight. Mercy. Amen. 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 Now I want you to know that's that's a prophetic, that's a prophetic age. And he doesn't look 80. You look around maybe 50. <laughs> but we want to wish you a happy birthday. And to all the other birthday celebrants, we wish you a happy birthday. But this is a this is a special one. 80 years old. When you get there, you have to say, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. As we come uh, this uh, morning, we want to um, welcome each and every one of you uh, visitors. Um, we welcome you once again in the house of God. Um, next week, I just want to make sure that we have this um, in your minds next week we will not be having church here next week sabbath we will not be having church here at abundant life all roads all our churches in the area will be going to cashman fields and we are going to be having a global church everyone will be coming together from mountain view paradise a new life abundant life all across they will be coming in all different uh, uh, colors we will be coming representing uh, Christ as we come to worship Christ amen? amen and so we want you to know that please do not lose this in your bulletin this gives your directions to Cashman's right and uh, we want to be fellowshipping there now next week this coming Friday evening this coming Friday evening at the Abundant Life Church, uh, Pastor Hall and the youth will be coming here for our youth rally. And we have some powerful speakers that's going to be here on Friday evening at Abundant Life. Friday evening at Abundant Life. The youth will be rallying, coming together here at Abundant Life on Friday at 7 o'clock. And so we're asking everyone to come out. But the next day, we will be meeting at Cashman's. And so we want everyone to be there and to enjoy with us. And this is a whole day affair. We will be having seminars and different things that to, to help you on your Christian journey. Amen? Amen? And so as we come today, it's such a great joy to be brought in God's temple. Amen? Amen? Amen. And God... When God calls his people, he wants us all to come together and worship him. Worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so at this time, I'm going to ask you to turn to our open scripture. Our scripture for this morning is taken from Genesis chapter 35, verses 1 through 7. When you have found it, I'm asking you to say amen. And I'm going to ask the church to stand as we read this scripture. Genesis chapter 35, verse 1, verse 1 to 7. Genesis chapter 35, verse 1 to 7. 
All right. I'm still hearing the pages turning. We want to welcome our online audience. Stay tuned. We pray that the blessings that we receive here, you will receive there, wherever you are, in your living room, in your bedroom, in your hotel room. We welcome you. Genesis chapter 35, verse 1 to 7. Verse 1, And the Lord said unto Jacob, Arise and go to Bethel, and dwell there, and make there an altar unto the Lord, that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau thy brother. Then Jacob said unto his household, and to all that was with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you, and be clean, and change your garments. And let us arise and go to Bethel, and I will make there an altar unto the Lord, who answered me in the day of my distress, and was with me in the way which I went. And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hands, and all the earrings which were in their ears. And Jacob hid them under an oak tree, which was by Shechem. And they journeyed, and the terror of the Lord was up on the cities that were round about them, and they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. And so Jacob came to Luz, which is in the land of Canaan, that is Bethel, he and all the people that was with him. And he built there an altar and called the place El Bethel, because there God appeared unto him when he fled from the face of his brother. Father in heaven, we just want to thank you so much for your word. We thank you for your power. We thank you, Lord, that you have brought us into this church. You have brought us together, Lord, to experience your presence, to experience the El Betel, the house of God where God dwells. We pray, Father, that as we assemble here, that you will help our minds to focus on what we need to focus on your work in the heavenly sanctuary. It is all about you, Lord, and it is all about the work of Jesus Christ. And so we lift up Jesus in, up, in every heart right now, and we ask that you will please bless us, anoint us, prepare us for what you have for us. We pray these things in the worthy name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and soon coming King. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Amen. We have been studying the series, Thy Kingdom Come, taken from the Lord's Prayer, the Lord praying for his kingdom to come on earth, that what is in heaven will be done on earth. And we see over these last few meetings, if you did not note this, we have been looking at the sanctuary, and we have seen that the sanctuary reveals the world, God, to the world, God's plan of salvation. Number one, it reveals the plan of salvation. It reveals Jesus, our Savior, our High Priest, and our soon coming King. It reveals the true nature of God and the Godhead. It reveals to us the importance of the Sabbath. It reveals the ultimate sacrifice. It reveals the atonement and the state of the dead. It reveals to us baptism and renewal. It reveals also the covenant and also the health message. It reveals unto us the judgment of God. It reveals to us the spirit of prophecy. It also reveals to us the law of God and the ten commandments. So many doctrines hinge on this very doctrine of the sanctuary. 
Within the century, we see all of these things. The century is the central focus of many of our doctrines here as we believe as Christians. And so it should not be ignored. And so we hope that as we go further uh, into next, uh, this week, uh, tonight, also Sunday night and Wednesday night when we close this out, that you will understand in a stronger way the meaning of the sanctuary and God's plan of salvation for mankind. God has set forth a rescue mission for each and every one of us. And it is my prayer that we will just align ourselves with the plans of God that we will be saved when Jesus Christ comes again. Amen? Amen. And so I want you to understand with me now in a real way. We see that this very sanctuary, it is embedded with different symbols of uh, different um, stories, different experience and testimonies that Israel went through. And so we want to, this morning, add a few different components that uh, the scripture talks about. And I want you to, at this time, I want to invite the tribes, the tribes of Israel to come uh, before us. These are the sons of Israel. And I'm going to be calling first, I'm calling for Judah. And I'm calling for Issachar and Zebulun. Judah, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun. Now, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun, I'm going to ask you to come over here, the three of you, I'm going to be asking you, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun, I'm asking you to stand right here in the outer coat on that side, yes, that's right, just turn around and show yourself to the congregation, all right, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun, and I'm going to be also calling here for on this side for Reuben, Simeon, and Gad. Reuben, Sibian, and Gad. On this side over here, Reuben, Sibian, Simeon, and Gad. Okay? And on this side over here, this represents the north side. I'm going to be asking for Dan, Usher, and Nephtali. Dan and Levi, they're together. And I'll explain to that, uh, you that a little uh, why. Dan, Issachar, and Nephtali. And then I'm going to be calling forth now for Benjamin and for Manasseh and Ephraim. And I want to have Benjamin, Ephraim, and Manasseh to stand. One stands over there, and we could have two over here. And this is just for the purpose of illustration. All right. You could stand just a little further. Yes, you could stand there so that we could see you. And you could stand right up there, the step where you could see you, both of you together. All right. And just hold your signs up. Now, it was very important that when Israel traveled, the tribes were represented. And the tribes, they were placed in a particular order for a reason. And one of the things that we see here that it was for protection, that was one, because they were at war, and it was for protection. But another key reason is that these um, tribes, they were ministers, they were ministries. And so God wanted to, to uh, in a sense, explain even the plan of salvation, even through these various tribes. Now, I quoted the last uh, night the importance of Genesis 49, verse 10. We see in Genesis chapter 49, verse 10, that Jacob called all his sons together, and he blessed them. And he showed them the future. He showed them what will be in their future. And he blessed them according to the way they were living. According to the way they were living, they received a blessing. And so remember that in the, the first, the oldest son of Jacob was who? Does anyone know? Who was the oldest son of Jacob? Can anyone guess and tell me who that was? Was it Reuben? 
Reuben, you got it. Yes, Reuben was the oldest. And he, the birthright should have been his. But if you remember in Genesis chapter 49, it says that Reuben, you will not receive the birthright because you did what was wrong in that you went up unto thy father's bed and he slept with his father's concubine. Now that's what the scripture tells us. Read it in Genesis chapter 49. Don't stone me, right? And, and so the birthright was passed from Reuben and then the Lord went and he examined the next ones down the line, which was Simeon and Levi. And as they were examined, they did not pass the test. Because the Lord says, well, Simeon and Levi, you guys, you guys were too fierce in, in, in your anger. Because you wiped out a whole city in retaliation for what they did to your sister Dinah. And so the birthright will pass from Simeon and Levi. Where's Simeon and Levi? Well, Levi is here as well. And where's Simeon? Where's Simeon? Simeon is over there. Now, technically, Simeon, these guys are over here, right? You're actually on this side of the, representing this side of the court. So you guys should be over on the outside. Yes, on the outside. Technically, these guys too, they are on, they're standing on the outside. Their camp is on that side, and their camp is over on this side, and so forth. I'm going to explain to you. And so what the Lord is saying, that the birthright passed down from Reuben, it jumped over Simeon, and it jumped over Levi, and guess who it landed on? Where's Judah? Judah. Judah, it came up on Judah. Now, Judah's camp was at this, uh, in this stage on the eastern side, and it was right next to the entrance of the tabernacle. And so these, these ones, he received the birthright, and it is through him in Genesis, uh, in, um, in, in Genesis chapter 49, verse 10, it says, Shiloh shall come through his lineage. So what happened the blessing of the birthright was determining where the Messiah was coming, what lineage the Messiah was coming. When Jacob was selected to be the son of the promise, that meant that the Messiah was going to come through one of his descendants. It was going to come through one of his children. And so the Lord had to determine who am I going to bring my Messiah through? Is it going to be Reuben? Is it, going to be, is it going to be Simeon? Is it going to be Levi? And according to the way they lived, the Lord determined the blessing. And the blessing came down on Judah. And the, the lineage, if you look in the book of Matthew and the book of Luke, you find that the lineage of the Messiah came through Judah. Powerful. What we do in our lifetime makes a difference in terms of our descendants. Some of us, we are sniffing our, descent, our inheritance away. Some of us, we're smoking it away. Some of us are pimping it away. Some of us, we are sinning it away. And I say, well, there are different sins that I can't even describe in the church. And we are washing away our inheritance. The inheritance should have been Reuben, but it passed over him. It should have been Simeon, but it passed over him. It should have been Levi, but it passed over him. And Judah received it. What I'm telling you, what we do in our lifetime determines the destiny of our children. Amen. It determines the, determines the destiny of our grandchildren. And you may not see the effects of it here, but when we are in heaven by and by, and if we are redeemed, we will see the true effects of the cancer sin. It is worse 